Hello and welcome to this review of my AT&T KBD301. This is a funky old keyboard I've been wanting to show you for a while. It appears to have been one of the models of keyboard that came with the AT&T PC6300, the other model being the related KBD302. The PC6300 was a rebranded Olivetti M24 computer and AT&T's first venture into the PC compatibles market. It wasn't spectacularly successful, but eventually did gain some momentum, so it's not too difficult to get hold of one of these. The keyboard may also remind you of the Xerox 6060 keyboard. That's because the Xerox 6060 was also a rebrand of the Olivetti M24. And yes, they do pretty much seem to be the same keyboard from what I can tell. The actual Olivetti brand model had the same shape but looked a lot more lively. I don't have one, but it's probably the same chassis as well. The name Olivetti might ring some bells, and indeed, if you look at the back of the keyboard, it says Made in Italia, it is a beautiful keyboard, just add some olive oil and is perfect. Mwah. The keyboard is working as follows, you just open up and out comes the spaghetti, you just put on the sauce and add the meatballs and is beautiful, just like mamma makes it, a top quality product from Olivetti, molto bene, molto buono, add more olive oil. The switch is an Olivetti dome with slider, which I've been hoping for a while to be able to show you. Thankfully, they feel completely different from what I had thought, so this turned out to be even more interesting than I had imagined. Olivetti dome with slider are a membraneless design that consists of these bizarre individual dome webby things that look a little bit like some sort of splat mark attached to the bottom of individual slider modules that clip into the mounting plate. The domes don't press on a membrane, but instead have a conductive pad stuck on the bottom, which is pushed onto a spiral of intertwined separated contacts printed on a PCB. When the pad makes contact with the spiral, it closes the circuit. Dome with slider switches are often quite interesting because they're one of the most diverse classes of switch designs, ranging from very simple indeed, such as Acer dome with slider, which is barely any different from a normal rubber dome keyboard, to crazy designs such as Fujitsu Peerless, Mitsumi Hybrid, and this one. See my dome with slider mega review for an overview of a bunch of them. But the key feel of these switches is even weirder than the way they are made. They don't feel like any rubber dome or even dome with slider keyboard I've ever tried before. They feel and even kind of sound like Alps plate spring switches instead, except stiffer, shorter throw and much scratchier. APS is a quite pleasant switch, but these are fairly horrendous. It's not nice at all. The sound is also not as consistent. The pitch seems to be all over the place. but the key feel is definitely the worst aspect here. It's quite unpleasant and it wears on your fingertips pretty quickly. Although it's not the worst switch I've ever tried, it's definitely up there. I'd much rather use a standard rubber dome keyboard, to be honest. The keycaps are somewhat funky looking die subbed PBT with very thin spherical dimples at the top. It's almost flat and they come in two colors on the numpad keys. They're kind of medium thick and they have this curious slant at the front, which some other Olivetti keyboards also have. Moreover, this mount is unique, I don't think it fits anything else. The layout is identical to that of the IBM Model FXT keyboard, including the bizarre three unit numpad plus key, although on the Olivetti they elected to use a single key plus two blockers, rather than having this giant stepped eyesore on it. The keyboard is from 1986, at which point the PC-AT had already been out for two years, but the XT layout remained popular for a while, so it's not too surprising they stuck with this. In my experience, it's not the most difficult layout to get used to because all the keys are actually there, it's just a bit cramped and some things are in slightly different places. It does tend to get a bit annoying during gaming though. The keyboard is, especially considering this is still a rubber dome model, mind you, and only an 83 key one at that, quite heavy, around 1.85 kilos. The surprising weight is caused by the presence of a large steel mounting plate, as well as a partial backing plate, also steel, which makes the assembly feel exceptionally taut and strong. 
The case, however, is somewhat thin plastic, and there are no screws or bolts of any kind to hold it together, it's just a bunch of plastic clips. Thankfully, they have made them a bit more accessible, and with a spatula you can take the retainers off the clips, so the chances of them breaking aren't as big, but it's still not great. It's got a quite interesting design of three position spring-loaded flip-out feet, which work quite well, and a somewhat short but stout coiled cable with some sort of serial connector on it. Overall, I think that the case is a bit loose, but the assembly is very strong indeed, so the guts feel like they would last through quite a lot of abuse. Overall, it's a fun keyboard with interesting switches, but it's not fun to use, I'm sure. The switches feel pretty awful, and therefore they don't make up for the archaic layout, but it's an interesting look at a cool switch design. Now, because it uses a weird connector, I wasn't able to use it in a weekly test anyway, which is okay, as it's more of a collector's item than a keyboard I'd actually want to use. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and following as a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.